A lot of our viewers ask about pitch meetings and how to acquire one. How does someone get a pitch meeting at your company? Well, DRG is a bit different um, where, you know, we're mostly co-producing with major networks or major production companies. Um, so there's already kind of an established relationship there. And I guess that's sort of the key point in terms of how do you begin that process? How, how does one open the door to get that kind of open communication with an acquisitions team or development team? So not just a DRG, but any company, um, you kind of have to understand what that company wants, what they work with, what they like to, uh, you know, what genres of content they like to work with, uh, what, what, getting a sense of like who their kind of key clients are. You know, for instance, um, at DRG, we work a great deal with, uh, uh, you know, Netflix. We work a great deal with uh, RLJ, Acorn. We work, you know, there's specific networks that we have great relationships with. When I was at Mar Vista, we had great relationships with Lifetime, uh, Disney, Nickelodeon. So we would, at Mar Vista, we were producing content that was kind of catered towards those audiences. Um, Ion Networks and a few others, and uh, uh, at DRG we have a different set of companies that we work closely with, that we just have a library of media that works well with those. So our acquisitions team has a different mandate than what the acquisitions team at, DR that, at Mar Vista had. And so if you're going to go into a company and attempt to build that kind of, you know, initial, let's see if some of my ideas are going to work well and we can get something going, uh, you have to first understand what that company does, what it is they like to work with, um, what media they're actually in need of, and then the best way to get a pitch meeting is to poise your kind of introduction as a way of being able to serve their needs, to help them accomplish their content goals. So like, you know, if, if they're looking for women in parallel films, if they're looking for, uh, you know, action films. You going into those companies, pitching those two scripts are going to be great. If you if you go in pitching stuff that has nothing to do with their core values of the company in terms of what they are, are identified with in the marketplace, you're not going to get a warm reception. It would probably, I mean, it's just they're looking for ways to satisfy uh, finding the content that they need. So if you can position yourself where you're kind of answering to that need, it's the best way to get it. I know with Mar Vista, we talked about the gold mine genre, yeah. and it was women in peril or, or tween comedies or things like that. Yes. Yeah. Things that were maybe lighter. It sounds like with um, DRG, maybe that some of the darker things like the Norwegian noir is more acceptable. So it really depends, again, what you're saying on, on finding out what, what they represent and, and going to that. So maybe a tween comedy wouldn't work. For, tween, yeah, for DRG, a tween comedy wouldn't work at all. Okay. Two years ago when I was at Mar Vista, uh, you know, I would have jumped up and down if you gave me an opportunity. It's, it's because the mandate <laughs> right. of the company is different. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, right. there's just a different need. And in addition to dark Nordic noirs and, you know, other deep, serious scripted content, uh, we also have a great deal of, of one-off factual films. You know, this is stuff at Mar Vista that would never work, but we have a massive library of like one-hour documentary type programs um, that do amazing in the digital space. We have a great collection of game show formats. We have, uh, you know, a great collection of like, we call it lifestyle programming, where it's like cooking and you know, DIY type stuff. Uh, you know, it's a totally different library. Every company has a completely different package that they're selling to the marketplace. Distribution companies to be successful, they need to be kind of branded as one thing or another, and because you know, because they're kind of branded that way it attracts certain types of buyers from the international marketplace. There's only so many channels in the world, there's only so many media buyers in the world, and they all have limited budgets. So you have to kind of, distribution companies have to position themselves to be different in the marketplace. And so they develop a, a kind of streamlined system of this content works really well, and because we're able to transact on it easily, let's get more of that. That's kind of how they think. So to go in, not just a pitch meeting, but if you want to showcase your script, if you want to be a producer and, and you know, uh, produce content and have it, you know, get hired by a company to produce content for them, you have to be able to position yourself to that company to say, I already do stuff like that, therefore I can help you out. You know what I mean? 
Right, so almost like back engineer it where a filmmaker knows that their film fits into this category and then see who has distribution that's similar to their film. Exactly. But then can they just call up, you said that that's already established relationships. I'm just curious, that's interesting. If I was a filmmaker and, and had a, let's say, a, a, a noir thri thriller that I wanted to have you know looked at, um, it sounds like that's not the channel, that's not the proper way to go about it in terms of me. Reverse engineering is exactly the way to do it. It's just if you have, if you already have a script, if you already have um, um, a film, or if you just have an idea like a treatment or anything along those lines that you're trying to get out into the marketplace, first off, if you're only at a treatment stage, I would try to package it or, or you know, get some other elements in there. But, but going to a distributor uh, that is in alignment with whatever project you're trying to pitch. That's how you begin that introduction of this is how we can start that process of, uh, you know, being regular in regular conversation about this topic and potentially future ones. It's walking in the door by reverse engineering it in the sense of I know this company works in these two genres or three genres. My project fits that very very well. Focusing on the companies that fit that. And then talking to them, basically saying, "Look, I know you produce this stuff, or I know you develop or co-produce this kind of material. I have something very much in alignment with it. Maybe we can talk about it. And if it's at an early stage, like a treatment or you know just initial you know rough draft screenplay type thing, going to them early and kind of saying, "I want to cater this for you. Give me your advice or your feedback. Or even better, if you're a producer, hey, I, I want to produce this." you know, woman in peril thriller, I want to produce this tween comedy, going to a company that works in that and saying, I'm going to produce it, I'm going to fund it, I'm going to figure out how to get the money for it. What I want from you is a clear understanding of what works, what's going to make it a, a great film in the marketplace or a great product in the marketplace. And if, you know, in, in exchange for that, I'd love for you to be have a first look at acquiring it later. You know that way, or even trying to sign a deal where they get the opportunity to have it regardless. And then they're now they have something at the back end. They have a filmmaker who's going to produce the whole thing, and they get to coach and create the exact movie they want. Um, and they're guaranteed to have it at the end of the day. You know, like that's kind of how you do it. You create opportunities for the production companies or for distribution companies that make their job easier. And is someone just calling up and finding the right contact? I mean, like, I'm sure it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a delicate process in getting that introduction because the filmmaker doesn't want to come off too pushy, doesn't want to send an email that's just too much information. What's what's the proper way to kind of just ease in just a little bit, n n not you know with a lot of expectation, not with too much pressure on the other person? Uh, I find LinkedIn is a great source um, because everyone in the professional world is on there, and uh, you look for terms like acquisitions. Um, anyone in the acquisitions department of a distribution company or executive producers who work for production companies, um, those are sort of the individuals tasked with making things happen, bringing stuff in. Um, and I wouldn't, if you're going to be jumping out to people um, blindly, they get a lot of people pounding them all the time. So that's kind of why I go back to you can't look at it as what can you do for me and how can you help me make my movie. You have to say, I understand your company is looking for material like this and I would like to help you with your search. If you, if you back engineer it in that sense, you are, help, you are making their job easier, you're helping them achieve a goal that's going to help them professionally and now all of a sudden they're going to be a lot more receptive to listening to you and you position yourself differently than all the other noise that's out there. That's kind of how you do it. And from that, you know, don't make the mistake of going after the top dog at every company. You know, like don't go after the CEO or the head of this or the executive VP of that because they are bombarded with work all the time and that's just within the company. That's not, you know, you know, random people reaching out. Um, so go for juniors, go for middle managers, go for people in companies who are hungry, who have more open time, and who are looking for those opportunities to bring stuff in because it helps them also professionally achieve that next level in the company.